first. And I'll also thank you. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to ask folks who can see the meeting notes, uh, either Sean or Matt, will one of you please share them? Uh, because as I mentioned, I uh, have one of them. Yes, we will continue to share them as people join in. Thank you. Oh, share them that way. Yes, never mind. I thought you meant in the chat. You were still right. Um, all right, so first item is Chaos Summer Break. It's just me. It's just a note for folks uh, starting Monday, that first, I don't know, August 5th, whatever. It's like in 10 days, and we take a two week break. We've done this every year. It's very nice. I just wanted to let you know. So there's not going to be an OSPO meeting, whatever the corresponding week is right there. That would be two weeks from today, I think. So August, it's probably that August 5th week. All right, cool. So yep. and I'll Elizabeth take care of that on the calendar and all that stuff. We'll remove it. But just no meeting next time because we'll be on break. All right. Don't be here in two weeks. It will be, I mean, I guess you could. Um, but um, yeah, that's there right. Won't be, there won't be a meeting. Yeah, and there will be nobody here to tell you that there's no meeting. So <laughs> you'll just sit alone for a while. <laughs> All right. Uh, and this is from last week. I wanted to catch up with folks who had the chance to attend Osmos for Good in New York City. How did that go? Uh, what kind of sessions were great? What kind of connections did we make? What, what did we learn? Just anybody. I just kind of want to hear about it because I didn't have the chance to go. I did not go either, so I have nothing to report. Go ahead, Remy. Yeah, so uh, I was lucky enough to attend. Uh, the event was sort of a three-day span. Uh, the first two days were at the United Nations headquarters. Uh, and then the second or the third day was at the Microsoft headquarters. There was a What's Next for Open Source that was hosted by the Linux Foundation. They had a variety of uh, workshops. I've linked to each of those things. There's event pages there. Um, there's definitely uh, at least two pieces of press that I have found. I know there's a third one I'll dig up the link for, but that also is a pretty decent like after the fact report of what has happened. I know there's a at least one or two other people here who were also there, but, but um, it was super legit. The first year there was like 60 or 70 people. This year that I heard there were 600 to 700 people. It was held in the ECOSOC chamber, which is on the same level as like the General Assembly and the Security Council. Oh, so that's cool. A, a much bigger deal. They had like, you know, assistant secretaries and deputy secretary generals and, you know, CIOs. Uh, national OSPOs from Germany were there. The UN gave some, a whole session on their OSPO and the future of what's going on there. So uh, there are videos for people on a stream. I will try and dig up those and I will see the floor to other people who might have things to add. Awesome. Thank you, Remy. You're the best. Uh, speaking of being the best, you have the next, or, or actually before we move on, and uh, I see David, you have some comments to share. Yeah, I was gonna. Thanks. I was gonna say the same thing. It was uh, all very good. One of the things I found very interesting or useful was like the. If it's not because the third day, I wouldn't have found it that useful. Uh, the first two days were were good, but I could have seen that online. It was packed, but they were not breaks enough to meet people and to talk with people. But thankfully, the third day at the what's next for open source, that uh, brought all that missing bits and as well coffee and lunch and pastries which it were not in the first two days even if it were promised a i'm i'm in uk i'm in, in university college london and we've got um we're building the ospo now essentially we are not we are not even having officially but uh i by talking to other people with other universities and other places where they have ospos that was good give me more motivation or uh, confirmation that even if I don't, if we don't have it officially, just because I have the, uh, I'm giving the time to work on it, and having as much as other universities where they're having OSPOs as well, uh, where they have only one person one day a week. So uh, that's been good. We are, uh, as part of the few people that were there from UK, uh, we're writing a blog post, and there is some 
um, different blog posts that we are going to be writing so we can advertise it here. One more thing is that if you're interested in the Ospos for good part of it, there is also a Slack team channel uh, that I will put the link here in case that you want to join. On the, yeah, absolutely. On the and feel free to drop those in the Slack channel on, on Chaos Community too, because I, I know it's easier to run in and find those things later if they also wind up there, because the meeting notes feel transient. I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but I check them when the meetings happen, not as a regular habit. No, I don't come back here in between meetings ever. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, to advertise uh, other cool stuff, that's the best place to go. Um, and thanks for that web recording, um, uh, Remy. Sophia, I see that uh, you were also able to go and you felt like the hallway track was on that third day. You want to add anything here? Um, sure. <laughs> I mean, I think that... It most of the comments have already been said there were not enough breaks. So I feel like it was harder to digest some of the things that we were hearing or connect with people. And I think even at the very end of day two, they just like, they couldn't get us to leave fast enough. It was clear that people just wanted to talk to each other. And I don't know if other folks were experiencing that. Like we just kept on meeting various people in the room and the security guards are like, can you, can you just leave please? Mm. Um, so I think that that was my biggest complaint of the event was that there wasn't enough space around it to connect, but it did bring a lot of interesting people uh, to the table, some of the usual suspects, but then also a lot of folks from, from government and from government OSPOs. And I think it was an interesting mix. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I hadn't gone last year, so I don't know what it was like then. Um, I definitely learned a lot about how these types of things are run. Um, I think there was definitely just a difference in attitude. I think for me, it was interesting to hear folks coming from a government context talk about open source concepts. And while we might be using similar words, I don't always know if we mean the same things. So that was kind of like my, my big question mark coming out of it is when you say something like stewardship and collaboration um, and resourcing and business models, like you're talking about this as a perspective of a government. What do those things mean to you? We talk about them in the context of large corporations like Google, but I I somehow feel like we don't always see eye to eye on things. So I think there could have been a little bit more space to understand where and how we can understand where those differences are. Because I think that that's to me where the rubber would hit the road in any initiative like this. Like I think in general, we, we value the same things, but if we don't agree on what the things mean, then that could be a problem or it could be could create some more friction of around how these things could actually be executed in practice. Um, so I think for me, the big takeaway coming out of it is I'm really excited to see how the so uh, Sovereign Tech Fund and Zendis partnership in Germany, how it goes. I think it was one of the most like exciting initiatives happening uh, that came up in the session because there was a lot of vision and, and optimism, but that was one of the few cases where they were actually doing something. They were putting money into these projects, into these types of initiatives. And I, I really hope that they, they continue to get space to share how it's going, because I think we could all learn a lot from how, from how that progresses. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, if uh, I could... but, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, I can't seem to raise my hand, but I also wanted like, to second everything that's been shared here. Um, and for, for me, um, what I what I feel was a really missed opportunity was that there were so many amazing people like that were gathered in this space. There could have been a lot more like uh, not only like translation around like what these certain things mean to you in, in this context, but also like actionable things or real tangible like movement towards uh, us for good. I feel like there was a lot of like conversation, but um, not as much opportunity to like to create together. So that was my. Um, I felt like what was missing for me. We had talked about the OSPO for good in a different working group here in chaos too. And these are the exact same things that came up. So particularly Alyssa, the two points, one was people said like the audience, not only the people on the panel, but the audience was just full of amazing people, <laughs> like just absolutely yeah. everywhere. Um, and so that was really cool. Um, but just kind of that, you know, what's the the call to action following this event? Some people felt like that was a little unclear. 
as to what that could be. Um, and I always struggle with, I think it's really interesting that it was called OSPOs for good as opposed to open source for good. And I feel like that distinction wasn't clear to me. It was unclear if we were having a, a conference about open source for good, um, which or really about like the format, the structure of, of what an OSPO is yeah. or could be. Hey, Sophia, I had a question on one of the things that you had said. So the comment on the misalignment or just like different ways of talking about potentially the same thing between corporations and government, is that, um, is it kind of something such that, you know, if you're talking with other corporate vendors, you believe that you can talk about open source kind of in the same way and, and get work done a little bit faster or come to resolution a little bit faster. But when say working with folks in government, that misalignment can create impedance in that conversation. Is that what this is about? I mean, that was a hypothesis based on what I heard. I mean, I, I don't personally work directly with government. So I, I can't say if this is actually what's happening in practice, but I do think that within industry, we have our own lexicon and it was clear that there was a different one that was happening in the room that I'm not familiar with as someone who's not in government. Um, and so like, even like the, just the, the rampant use of acronyms that I've never heard about until that week, it was like, it was clear that there was a different set of language being used, even in the technology sector within government, but that was more seemingly aligned to what government and other civic entities and policy folks are used to speaking in. Um, and so I think, again, there was like common vision, but nuanced language that I don't necessarily think was completely aligned. Um, but that's just a hypothesis. I'm curious for folks that do engage more directly with government if, if that was something that they noticed as well. Thinking of Remy here. Remy has obviously been on both <laughs> sides. <Yeah. laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot, Remy. Yeah. Oh, no, that's fine. It's fine. Um, I think that there's definitely like there's no monolithic open source community, right? So we're all communities of communities. And this pocket of the open source community is a really interesting blend of international development, which is its own discipline within the world of nonprofit and NGO. So there is already a very well-established language for like, what does sustainability mean? And what are the sustainable development goals? And what is like international aid? And like, that's a whole international relations, international policy lens that they bring, which is already very different than like doing national government or state government or regional or local government. Um, and a lot of it is like um, led by EU, right? So there's a ton of EU centric OSPOs and the European Commission that are like really leading in that space. So it's less Western, it's more European, and it's, um, you know, the, the, the vocab is different for sure. I am new-ish to international development. My political science and public policy has mostly been at the national level and at the state level. So I'm still learning the, the bubble uh, that is international development too. And I think that the, the United Nations OSPO itself is a, is a really interesting construct because they have a super ambitious goal of like starting a number of specific OSPOs at the national level at like a number of countries by like 2026 or 2027 or something. And as someone who's like starting a little OSPO inside of a tiny center, inside of a larger agency, inside of a very large government, I'm like... It's going to take me years to do just that one piece, like, you know, let alone if you're trying to do it for like multiple whole countries. Right. So I think it's a it is an ambitious goal. I hope that, you know, I'd love to see them succeed. We're happy to support them in that. But I think that there's like one of the strengths of open source is the federated nature and how we need to have lots and lots of layers to it. 
and having that like international layer is like one of the most top down ways you can do open source, which is important to have a strategy, but you know, bottom up has always been how open source is done, right? Like it's usually from the people going up instead of from the top going down. So uh, totally agree that there's a lot of like vocab mismatch and taxonomy mismatch. And just my experience being in government is, you know, when I started here, I was like, oh, why don't we have like one national OSPO? And now that I've been here, I'm like, I can't even get one IT department inside of one part of the agency, let alone like everyone to agree to like one central strategy. So, you know, my expectations have been, you know, tempered, altered. I've learned more as I've gone along. I still think like national OSPOs are a great strategy. I just think that we need to be realistic about how much effort that's truly going to take to align and how many layers of alignment you're going to need to be successful in that. That's a longer take, but I hope that answers some of the questions. Can I, can I respond a little bit to what you brought up for me? Uh, really appreciated all that. I just wonder if a conversation that OSPO for Good was trying to have with all these different types of, of stakeholders would have been helpful to have a conversation about defi like definition too. Like, you know, like started with like, what is good in your context? What is OSPO, you know, like really starting from basics, because I think we're, we're coming from so many different, um, I don't know, we, we, were, we, were, we were like, we were, there's so many, so many different people were trying, they were trying to gather in the same room and it was hard to have a conversation except for maybe with the people that you see in like other spaces, you know? So it was hard to like bridge, even if, even though it wasn't like created a much time, but it was hard to bridge to like, the part, the people that you're not always working with too. Yeah. That's why I think chaos is so important. Like mm. Dawn's practitioner guides that she just published where we're like mm. actually saying like, these are metrics and these are the yeah. things we're talking about. Like, it's really important that we have this common vocabulary that we can show to others and be like, this is what we're talking about when we say healthy. This is what we're talking about when we mean risk. This is what we're talking about when we mean sustainability. Like we're... You know, chaos, I'm here because this is where a lot of those words and definitions are actually being shared and defined and the practitioners are here working together to to define them. So big shout out to chaos. Yeah. That's exactly why I'm here. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would advocate for anyone who's like trying to design uh, any sort of conversation or event like, 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 like what OSPO for good, because whether you do it like a small scale or like macro scale like gathering people at the UN that we we do try to like bridge those differences and, and start with definite I, I think for me starting with that like some definitions would have been helpful I feel like I have to do it every time it comes up um, but I feel like I've said this so many times about how I value the taxonomy that we're creating in this community and I just want to plus one both of what Alyssa and Remy have already said. And it would have been great to do that, but that's also my own soapbox. So I'll get off of it now. Do you think people will come again next year? You really, okay. Oh yeah. It was 10 times I, I, this year than it was last year. Interesting. Cause I feel like I felt disappointed that like we I mean, clear. I, I mean, maybe it's not clear, but I very much care about OSPOs for good, you know, and open source for good. And I think half of the reason we do this work is because of the potential to do good. Um, and and I walked away being like, well, what? Where where where? Yeah, I was like, cool venue. <laughs> I've been talking Sophia, a lot. Sophia, of course, had like one of the greatest panels, though. So, did we do a call out for to Sophia yet? So, Parent, let's, so, apparently not. Tell us about yeah. it. Yeah, tell us about Sophia. Um, well, after sitting through a day of vision and strategy, I totally revamped my panel and. I think it was Remy had a had this comment earlier where I think there was a lot of vision of how a government can create top down strategy and initiative. And I thought what was really missing from the conversation was really 
understanding why individuals choose to participate in open source and why it kind of has the groundswell that it has is because of the individuals and what they want to do and the connections that they make in the community. So I focused the panel on that. We had some incredible folks to speak with. Um, Demetrius Chatham from GitHub, we started all in. I know you folks are familiar with that. David Neely from Apache and Mike Milanovic from um, Eclipse. Um, and then this guy, Amir, or, or, sorry, or, oh gosh, Anir, sorry, I met him last week um, from the government of Bangladesh. So we had one civic participant as well as some very like well-established open source leaders uh, across industry. Um, and I think it was, I don't know, I kind of wanted to provide the the more realistic lens of what it's like to actually work in these sort of unstructured self-governed spaces. And if this broader OSPOs for Good community would like to emulate how the success of open source as a collaborative model, then we should understand how those actually work and why they work and why the people in them choose to be in them. Um, so that's what I focused my panel on. And it was kind of there weren't very many conversations that focus at that level. So I was really hoping just to add to the overall content of the session to provide a different perspective. Sorry, I can't see the chat at all. If you haven't noticed my, my laptop crash and which is why I'm calling in from Platinum Blonde. <laughs> my, <laughs> my machine has a vendetta against Zoom. Sorry about that. Just David Nally was solid on the panel is what Remy had to say. And then, and that part, like part, part of the reason I think we all participate in these spaces is because it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. These are fun. These meetings are fun. I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, Did you have a comment? Remy? Your hand is up, Remy. Yeah. yeah. So you know, maybe I'm more of a, a primary audience for this kind of thing, but on the like, I totally agree that there wasn't an obvious call to action or that it was more like, hey, we're all in the same room and sort of celebrating that we're all doing this and we're all for it. But I did get a few like really solid external points of validation for, for like a government OSPO. Um, Germany, Zendis, is doing incredible work. France is doing incredible work. The Netherlands is doing incredible work. And they're like 10 years ahead of the federal space in the United States for like what they're doing. And I really think there's like a, a playbook that isn't written yet, but is starting to become obvious. Like the stuff they're doing with like an inventory, like figuring out your inventory for where all your software is so that everyone's not rebuilding everything and reproducing everything. That's like a super common thing. And the European folks, they have public code.yaml and the United States has code.gov, which has code.json. And like, they're trying to solve the same problem and they're doing the same thing. Right. And so understanding that like, yeah, we already did this and this is how we implemented it. And this is how we integrated it with our CI and CD and like, these are the processes that our procurement people have to go through before they buy things. Like there are some common threads that are starting to emerge. And there is some like, you know, I can look and say like, okay, so this is like the government OSPO playbook. Like I can, I'm seeing pieces of it that are materializing. I'm still writing them down and like congealing them into like things to talk about, but there's a lot of like, cool, you already did that. We're working on that now. Once you have that, this is what you do with it after. This is how metrics fits into that. Once you have metrics, this is how you use them. Like there's some good uh, connective tissue that could be there. And like, I have my own like galaxy brain, like how do we use metadata at the agency level to bubble up to the code.gov level and then align that with public code.yaml and then toss that into software heritage so that we can have like, the global index of government software on planet earth and like actually connect all of these repositories the way they should be. Right. And then like, look at the supply chain and be like, who depends on what in what countries and who can field what engineers to actually support and sustain the stacks. And like, I see some like uniting hackers on planet earth stuff in the early stages. Like I can, I can smell it. I can taste it. I think we're getting closer to it, but it's still a ways out and there's a lot of work to do, but like talking with those national hospitals was huge because I'm like, okay, 
this is where we should be taking our governments and our non nonprofits and academia can fit into this like model that's really been driving in Europe. Uh, I can see what you mean, like the head start on France. Like when I when I was in the in the research there, everything is encouraged to be make open source even ten years ago. It like. INRI and CNRS, they were pushing for this like 15, 20 years now. Excellent. Everyone's been sending me the Switzerland article this week. I've seen it like four times, <laughs> right? Like we should toss that into the chat too. I'll go look for it. I put it there. <laughs> <laughs> I will say from an external perspective, I don't think I've seen uh like a convening of this many different people around open source in a long time which is really unique i've been going to so many linux foundation events or academic events and they're they're just a piece of the pie um but to see folks from like university ospos corporate ospos government <laughs> it just it was from my perspective it was really unique so when you were asking if people will come back Next year, Alyssa, yeah, I think so, because I, I really haven't seen something like that in a long time where everybody's in the room talking. It's pretty cool. That's good to know. For uh, sure. I saw the last week there was also in the UN some other meetings about open knowledge and open data. Uh, and I participated remotely in some of them, uh, and I wonder is there a real connection between OSPOS and all the open initiatives? Like, for example, the Uruguay government was releasing all public data as open data. And uh, I feel like there is a disconnection, but I, I didn't attend in person to any of these. So did you talk with the people outside open source as a single front or is all independent things right now in the in the UN, I can answer that. Um, the I think one of the thing one of the thing I got through in these two days was that the OS, the it's not open source software. Like many people mentioned, that I got open source knowledge, open source data, like open open data, and and all those things. So many many different places they were talking about that. So uh, yes, in a way, that's why my was my impression. Um, I don't know anyone wants to say anything else on that, but a uh, one thing. So, uh, following what Remy had said on on uh, the governments and all the things uh, from the academic point of view, I was looking at uh, that was giving me more material to come to the UK now and and promote more collaboration with the government as well from the university perspective. And and one of the things that was mentioned for France is the the blue hats, uh, which I don't know it, it's been for a few years already, but it's this initiative where the people who contribute to open source uh, in the government in France they have this kind of a blue hats that they wear, and that uh, is kind of a as a recognition that they get it like as a as a I don't know like thinking like as a word, but it also works very well as a as a way. I don't know, I think as a stickers on a laptop, but maybe they don't go as much with the stickers on the laptop, but they have the hat and the people are like, oh, what's that hat about? And I'm like, oh, this is because the open source contribution to the government. So that it's, um, I don't know, I, that's gave me ideas on how to do something similar for open source in the academic world, uh, like Moodle or things that maintain the infrastructure of the universities. One other thing I want to mention is that something I missed that it would have been crazy, it would, it, amazing, it would have happened like a week later, is that um, Aiva from CISA mentioned about uh, how, uh, because people were mentioning it like in some panel where, oh, the vulnerability is open source software and all that stuff. And, and she mentioned how, I mean, all software have vulnerabilities, either open source or closed source. And yes, how, how brave would have been if the, Whatever happened last these few days last week, the how is called the strike, crowd crowd strike, uh, mess up with all the Windows machines, the whole the world will have happened just before that, as a as a point of like it's not only open source where they got the novelty. It is.
Yeah, that was a deep well of conversation, I think. Um, I wanted to hear more about Ospos for Good, and boy, howdy. A lot you of did. feelings about Ospos for Good. <laughs> so I appreciate everybody uh, jumping in for that conversation. That was really great. Uh, any other threads people want to pull on before we proceed? Okay. Oh, uh, just, just oh. one really quick one. Go ahead. Did you say boy, howdy? I sure did say boy howdy. <laughs> is that a is that a regional phrase that I should be aware of? Uh, I guess so. I I I guess it is. Uh, growing up in New England, I somehow picked up boy howdy. So <sighs> thank you. Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> now I am aware of every time I say it. Now I'm going to be like, where did I pick that up from? Um, moving on. Remy, you threw a couple things in here uh, that have a lot of acronyms in them, and so I don't want to try to read them out. Uh, yep. Go right ahead. Uh, welcome to the acronym soup that is government. Uh, <laughs> TLDR is that the White House published a cybersecurity priorities memo for the 2026 budget. In it specifically, it calls out improving open source software security and sustainability. And I pasted the line in there that specifically mentions agencies are encouraged to study the benefits that can be gained through establishment of a governance function modeled after private sector open source program offices that define roles, responsibilities, and methods of engagement. So OSPOs explicitly got a shout out from the White House for agency priorities as they're writing out their requests for budget year 2026, which is... Do, do you know how this happened? Like... There, I'm going to point at CISA probably. Uh, okay. the, the folks at the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency uh, have done an excellent job of, you know, advocating for open source supply chain security, working through like OS3i and hiring people and convening people through like the Open Source Security Summit. So I suspect that CISA and the Office of the you know, federal CIO and a few other elements from the Office of Management and Budget and Executive Office of the President, you know, this is a high priority for them. Also, there have been a lot of high priority hacks. So, you know, that's another piece of it too. It's like, <laughs> this is I how we're going to hopefully way. respond to the XZs and the log for js et cetera, that have been, you know, happening in the past couple of years. Has there been discussion? Really oh, sorry. Oh. No, no, no. Um, Go ahead. Has there been a discussion in, in, like within the government about how things might change with a different leadership in 2020? Just the servant. So whoever is in the big chair, you know, Medicare and Medicaid have to be delivered to the American people. Software has to be maintained. You know, whoever's going to be in the chair is going to be in the chair. Uh, that's how I feel about it. I think a lot of public servants feel that way about it too. There's also this thing called the Hatch Act, which is like, Federal employees don't get involved in political campaigns, et cetera, or like in very limited ways. So again, not a lawyer, but uh, you can read about those things on the internet. Um, but, you know, that is definitely something I think that is in the background. Uh, I'm actually here in Washington, D.C. I think a lot of people are thinking about that. But for me personally, I've always enjoyed open source as it's been very, you know, broadly beneficial to everyone, right? Like it includes all people, all sources for everybody. So I like working in it because I don't have to think that hard about the politics side of it. Uh, and it's cool to be in the public sector doing it, but other people, maybe they feel a little different and they think about it in a different way. I just wonder if some of these like priorities will shift. So Sure. And executive orders yeah. are, you know, done by presidents, right? So the thing is, is like the federal source code policy M1621 and some of these other, you know, the SBOM M2414 that just came out, like these haven't been wiped off the slate in previous administrations. So I think there is some staying power to them, uh, but you're, you know, you're not wrong. If it's not passed by Congress and it's not a law, it, it hits a little bit differently than if it's an executive order, but I think a lot of it too is it gets baked into the standards. So like the NIST standards aren't changing regardless of who's present and the open SSF secure scorecards and the OWASP standards. And you know, a lot of those things are set 
right? Those are not necessarily a matter of uh, a policy, but they're a standard. So, and best practices, the stuff we do in the community. So I think it's a great call out that, you know, people are definitely thinking about that, but that's the beauty of code, right? There's like Lessig talked about the four levers of how we, you know, change society, right? There's like code and markets and laws and community. Code. This one. Yeah, and co yeah. So uh, I like those other levers. I think they're all very important. I like that was a very diplomatic answer. Thank you. Well done, Remy. Uh, anything yeah. else on this <laughs> awesome, awesome uh, inclusion that we have from Remy before he moves on to the next thing that he has also put on the agenda? This was fast. s -bomb is happening in uh, Denver, Colorado in September. If you care about S-bombs and a lot of OSPOs do, there's a virtual component uh, you can attend remotely. And I just wanted to know if anybody knew of OSPO presence at DEF CON. Uh, that was my other question. If if you do, say hello in the chat or Slack, and maybe we can have like some kind of meetup or, or talk at DEF CON. Is the s Bomberama open to everyone? Yep. Okay. The silence tells me uh, no response as of yet. Maybe everybody will show up to Espamorama based on this post. <laughs> Great name. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty good. good. I'll definitely take a look at that one. Do you know what it's about? I could read, but so. S bombs. Well, yeah, but like, are they? <laughs> Sorry, <man>. Sean. <laughs> Uh, take a look at that uh, when you have a second, if you're interested. Let's uh, go to the reminders. General channel on Slack has a forum for newsworthy goings-on that you'd like to share. Chaos blog posts, chaos-related conference talks, all the chaos news, cool fun stuff that you can uh, learn from chaos. And then uh, there's, uh, I'm not familiar with the acronym OFE. Anybody know that one? Open Forum Europe, maybe? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Open Forum Academy in Boston. The CFP deadline is approaching while we'll be on break. So before the next OSPO working group, uh, make sure you submit if you want to submit. And then LF Member Summit in California. Uh, that deadline is on August 30th. And if you have podcast or, oh, Espanorama made it into the reminders. We just talked about it. And then lastly, uh, send podcast ideas and feedback to podcast at Chaos Community. Is that a new email address or have I just never seen it before? Mm, it's newish. It's newish. And you've never seen it. I've never seen it and it's newish. So podcast ideas and feedback there. Uh, anything else, anybody else want to bring up uh, before we break? I will just say on the, if you have an interest in doing a podcast, Alice has been coordinating all of our podcast work. And so she's been absolutely spectacular and amazing. So if you have an idea to do a, a podcast, it doesn't come with all of the organization behind the scenes and the editing and the recording and all that kind of stuff. Alice helps with that. So if you do just have an idea for a podcast, podcast please um, reach out to Alice on that email. Love that we have an email now. Whoever did that, thank you. Yep. All right. With that, uh, that was another awesome uh, Chaos OSPO working group meeting. Thanks everybody for showing up and making this agenda so very meaty and what a great conversation it was. We will see you again after the break. Don't be here in two weeks. Nobody will be here. Uh, we'll see you again in four weeks. Be here and hang out with your friends that are not here also. <laughs> Thank right. you and everybody. Get